Okay, so I'm going to do a quick little um, rundown of how I transfer some of my designs from VCarve Pro into Fusion 360 for, for cutting on the ShopBot CNC router. Um, so here I am in VCarve Pro. I've got this, uh, it's just a mini chair. It's for some donors that we do. And, you know, I used to have all these, these tool paths that I would do in VCarve, but um, I want to export this out and um, use it in Fusion 360. So I start by just making sure I got what I want. I'm just going to highlight everything. Um, I'm going to take these logos off though because I don't really want those. I just want the outlines of the parts. And then you go up to File, Export, and Export as DXF. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And then in Fusion 360, you can go ahead and open up a new file. And you can just go to Insert, Insert DXF. You choose your plane that you want to put the DXF on. And then you select the DXF file. Go to the desktop. Give me a warning that the file does not contain unit information. The design units will be used. You can change this with the units drop down. So up here, uh, if the scale was out of proportion, because maybe in VCarve it was in millimeters, and now here in, it's in inches, you could adjust that. But uh, single sketch, you can choose which layers you actually want to have imported. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. Now that's great. This is you know two dimensional drawing, just like it was in VCarve Pro, but the easy way to change that is in, in Fusion 360 here. I'm just going to hit E for extrude. I'm going to select everything. I'm just going to do a window drag, so right, left click, drag a window. And I'm going to hit minus 0.485 because I know that's what my half inch Baltic bridge plywood is. Enter. So I lost my pockets, but that's not a big deal. I can come over here to my data panel and turn that sketch back on. And now that I can see those lines, I can go ahead and hit extrude again. I'm gonna do these drill holes first. I'm gonna hit minus 0.485. I'm gonna do these pockets, but first I wanna make sure I get the dimension right. So I'm gonna hit I for inspect or measure. I'm going to click on this face here, which will be the inside face of the pocket, and this will be the outside. And I can see my distance is 0.356. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Hit E for extrude again. Select all these pockets. Go minus 0.356. So there you go, I've got my parts, they're now three-dimensional. Um, I go ahead and save that. And so to get this onto the ShopBot, I'm gonna go up to my Change Workspace button. I'm gonna scroll down to Cam. I'm gonna do a new setup. It automatically selects all the bodies that are in, in that. Um, and you can change your axes if you need to. Um, you go to stock, just look at this. So it's telling me I need you know, 25 and a half by almost a little over 14 and a half. That's because I got my offsets set to one inch. Um, I'm just going to do 0.125, that's half of my bit diameter. So I need some 14 by 25, okay. Now, process of operations here, I wanna make sure that I, um, I drill my holes, then I pocket, and then I do the exterior profiles. So um, I'm going to drill, choose my tool, 
copy that. It's great because you can collect this select same diameter. It's going to pop in all those other ones. For my depths, I want to make sure I go um, 10 thou below the bottom surface. Okay. I'm going to do my pocket. Select my down cutting quarter inch end mill. Okay. And make sure that the bottom height is my selected contours. I'm not going to leave any stock. Um, I'm not going to do a lead in or a lead out. And I will smooth profile so 10 degrees. Let me go back and choose my geometry. You can choose profile edges, or if you've got a bottom pocket like this, you can just choose the bottom surface. Either way will work. Hit OK, Let's see if that computes. Looks good. And then I'm going to do a 2D profile, a contour. Change my tool to my quarter inch compression end mill. Okay. Geometry, I'm just going to select the bottom profile of all the con or contour of all the profiles. Uh, you can throw some tabs on here. You should probably do that for um, especially these little guys. Gives you a nice little preview window. Hold very well, but we can go this way. Just because these parts are so small, I don't want them flying away on me. Okay. And then you can also check um, cycle time by either choosing the individual toolpath operation, right click on it, go to simulate, and then over on statistics on this tab, you see the machine time is two minutes and 16 seconds. Close, you can do the, the full cycle time by right clicking on the setup, simulate, statistics, five and a half. So, um, and then to send that out to the ShopBot, I just right click on Actually, let me check something real quick. Okay, yeah. You can look, uh, make sure you do the overhead, straight overhead, to see if you've, um, if any of your parts are too close together. And you'll see it jump up and the profile will stop. So I like that. I'm going to right click on setup, I'm gonna go to post process. My cloud posts is what I'm using. Um, this was the one I downloaded in the last tutorial, but I actually am going to use my. Uh, my custom one. So I'm just post, call it uh, mini chair. And you can see here I, I had it set to open up the, the actual SBP file once it completed it. So you can check any of your um, coordinates just to make sure that everything looks right. And then you can go over to ShopBot SB3 software open that, this file up and run it on your ShopBot. I hope that helps clear up anything and have a great day.